I'm Paul Ridker, a cardiologist at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, uh, and I appreciate you watching Science News for the American Heart Association. For the last 30 years, we have really focused all our concepts of risk reduction in cardiovascular disease on diet, exercise, and smoking cessation, and then ultimately on lipid lowering with statin drugs. That's been a real revolution for our patients and in care of uh, our patients as well as reducing events. What I'm here talking about now, though, as principal investigator of the CANTOS trial, the canakinumab anti-inflammatory thrombosis outcome study, is an entirely new way of thinking about heart disease prevention and really a translation of an elegant new biology directly into clinical practice. That biology has to do with inflammation and the inhibition of inflammation itself. Now, some 20 years ago, our research group showed that if you measured inflammation with what we now call high sensitivity C-reactive protein or HSCRP, we could identify high risk patients. And it was 19 years ago that we showed that the cholesterol lowering statin drugs are both anti-inflammatory and lipid lowering. Uh, and here on Science News, some eight years ago, we talked about our Jupiter trial that said, if you had high levels of CRP, but low levels of cholesterol, you clearly benefited from being on a statin. And those data have changed guidelines worldwide but it didn't answer the fundamental question, which is, can we have evidence? Can we generate some evidence that reducing inflammation without changing cholesterol might lower vascular events? Well, that's the fundamental question of Cantos. Cantos enrolled 10,000 patients who had a prior myocardial infarction. They still had a high CRP level despite being on all aggressive therapies. LDLs were very low to begin with, and we randomly allocated them to aggressive standard of care plus placebo or to one of three different doses of canakinumab, which is a monoclonal antibody that targets interleukin-1 beta. It's a very narrow scalpel intervention that lowers IL-1, which in turn reduces interleukin-6, which in turn reduces C-reactive protein. And we've thought for a long time that the IL-1 to IL-6 pathway might be involved in this process. Well, the bottom line findings of the cardiovascular part of the trial were very impressive we got the same 15% reduction in our primary endpoint of non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke, and cardiovascular death that was observed in the earlier PCSK9 trials, which were aggressive LDL-lowering trials. But in our study, we didn't change LDL cholesterol at all. What we did do was we lowered CRP and IL-6 by about 40%. We had a 17% reduction in the secondary cardiovascular endpoint, which additionally included unstable angina requiring urgent revascularization. And I think as a vascular biologist and inflammation biologist, most interesting clinically, a 30% reduction in ever needing bypass surgery or angioplasty. Now, all therapies come with risk. We did have an increased risk of infection. That's expected when you give a immunomodulating type drug like this. And so canakinumab as an anti-inflammatory drug did lead to a small but statistically significant increase uh, in fatal infections. So anyone considering use of this drug We'll have to bring patients in a little bit earlier uh, and be on the lookout for early infection. Very similar to what we do with our patients who have rheumatoid arthritis and take any of the biologic drugs. But all-cause mortality was actually non-significantly reduced. And that's because the drug has some several interesting effects that go beyond the cardiovascular arena. So we're also publishing a second paper simultaneous from the CANTOS trial talking about another endpoint that is outside the cardiovascular specialist realm, but very important to our patients. That has to do with cancer. Let me give a little background here. Uh, when our patients smoke a pack of cigarettes, or inhale asbestos, or uh, other pulmonary toxins, they're chronically activating inflammation in the lungs, the same kind of inflammation that we were after in the vascular system. So while the cardiovascular part of CANTOS gives us the first evidence ever that we can reduce inflammation without changing lipids and get a cardiovascular benefit, we established an oncology endpoint committee eight years ago at the beginning of this study to track how many new cancers might there be, and particularly focused on lung cancer because we knew that high-risk patients with heart attacks are often very likely to be smokers, and CRP levels are also a predictor of the inflammation in the lung. And there's an idea in the cancer community about inflammation in what we call the tumor microenvironment that actually increases the risk of small cancers progressing, invading, and metastasizing. Anyway, the bottom line is that our oncology endpoint committee adjudicated all the cancers in the trial. 
and we had a dose-dependent reduction in all-cause cancer mortality of nearly 50% and a 75% reduction in new lung cancers and a 75% reduction in dying from lung cancer. That's quite extraordinary expression of a new biology telling us that the interface between inflammation, atherosclerosis, and systems biology is exquisitely well-tuned. When we started this trial, we knew we'd have some adverse effects. That's the increased risk of infection I've talked about. We knew we'd have some beneficial effects. I haven't described it, but we actually had reductions in rheumatoid arthritis, reductions in osteoarthritis, reductions in gout. The hypothesis of the trial, the main hypothesis was, will we reduce vascular events? Yes, fewer angioplasties, fewer bypass surgeries, fewer myocardial infarctions. And, as I've just described, a, a large reduction in the risk of lung cancer or fatal lung cancers. I want to be clear, however, on the cancer side of this. These data are turning the uh, uh, cancer research method upside down. Normally, patients with advanced cancers are studied to see if a new intervention will work on top of standard therapy. These were cancers that weren't yet diagnosed. They were small tumors equally distributed in the four arms of the trial that by getting this powerful targeted anti-inflammatory drug we had a reduction in the progression and invasiveness of those cancers. We don't know yet whether or not the same biology will hold up in terms of treating patients who haven't diagnosed cancer. Uh, so staying with lung cancer, those patients obviously would have some surgery and very often chemotherapy or radiation. So we need to move forward very quickly with new clinical trials to see can we extend this interesting biology into more advanced tumors. The bottom line of Cancel's though has been very exciting. As a cardiologist interested in inflammation biology now for over 30 years, we've seen this move from a clinical observation and with our bench colleagues' elegant basic biology going back a long way to actually translating this into clinical practice. So for cardiovascular practitioners and uh, nurses taking care of cardiovascular patients, we know today for the first time that inflammation inhibition at least with canakinumab, can reduce cardiovascular event rates with no change in cholesterol. And we have this initial evidence suggesting that we might also be able to alter cancer risk for our patients. Remember though, if you've got a patient with a high CRP in either primary prevention or secondary prevention, the first things we should do, smoking cessation, dietary discretion, exercise. All three of those things will improve outcomes and they all lower vascular inflammation.